and welcome to my channel. Welcome, welcome season six, episode 26, or if you're following the app, it's season seven, episode 11. Anyway, they jump right in to where they left off last episode and Kiki and Stormy are in her guest house and she's letting Kiki know that she's invited Tiffany so they can kind of hash out some of their, you know, beats or whatever just to get together because she thinks there's some miscommunication somewhere and they can bring it together so as she puts you know lets kiki know what her plans are kiki has her plate and her thing is like mm, i just lost my appetite because <laughs> her thing was she was not there to do that anywho in the in the midst of them talking about that there's a knock at the door and guess who it is it's tiffany so Tiffany walks in a little apprehensive looks like but she claims like she has a hairline fracture in her foot so she only has one shoe on and I guess a little boot on the other <clears throat> and she's bringing baby ace <laughs> and um we sent we tend to think that baby ace was used as a bodyguard that's what stormy said anyway long story short she sits down and kiki pretty much goes right in and she says well she just wanted to you know address some things she said she had seen her uh interview with carlos king and she felt like most of the, the interview was about her but there was a couple of discrepancies that she wanted to go over because they weren't accurate so she goes into you know you painted this narrative like i was always coming for you and that's not in, not the case at all so she T tiffany brings up the you know the spa uh, issue and uh, the spa, I guess, situation. And she's like, well, yeah, she said, I was just informed by my cousin Tisha what you had said about me, basically, basic, basically saying if you, the way that I treated Tisha, if I can treat my cousin like that, then I can treat anybody like that. So you didn't want to be around me or get to know me or whatever. It was like a waste of time. And um, she was like, you are basing that based on what Tisha has told you about me. She said, do you know anything about what Tisha has done to me? And Tiffany's like, no. She was like, you don't know the whole flawed relationship that me and my cousins have had since we were teenagers. You don't know the half. And she says, I feel like you're basing your opinion on my character, on what Tisha is telling you. So Tisha and her confessionals basically say, well, I've always, you know, never, I've always seen her arguing. I've always seen her, you know, come for different people. She said, and I'm the type of person, she said, I match energy. She said, if she's coming at me, I come back. And, you know, usually she says, usually she's not like that because, you know, she usually lets people do them and well, that's it. But I don't know. I really didn't understand her explanation. <laughs> I didn't understand. But she went into detail about how she usually matches energies, but she was matching energy. But if that's not your character, why did you do it? I feel like you were being shady, uh, Tiffany. But nonetheless, Kiki got you together. Because her thing was, you can't base my character on what somebody say anything about me she said you can ask anybody that knows me other than my cousin and they'll let you know that i'm a good person she said you won't be able to find anybody that says that i'm not a good person and she says well i'm not gonna go out and find anybody she said well i'm just letting you know that you know i you can't base it on tisha so she says she got what she was saying but a part of me is like this was just a taping obligation really for the both of them as neither one of them really cared about being there but tiffany more so said it in her confessional her thing was i understand what she was saying she said i guess really the whole going back and forth she said me and kiki were at fault she said and i can own my part in that she said but you really i just want to really get through this and go home and cuddle with my baby 
she it was just a taping obligation. She did what she had to do. And based on how it ended, you know, it, that was probably her last taping obligation. So anyway. So from that scene, they go into Chris. Chris Fletcher goes and visits Mars Martel. I get all the M's mixed up. Forgive me. Martel, because he's actually moved out finally from his rental property. Woohoo! And now he can list the house the way he wants and, you know, properly, the proper way without somebody living in it. And, you know, and his, the people, the house will be happy. His business will be happy. And, you know, great. Congratulations for Martel to be able to find another rental property. Why won't he buy something? I'm thinking then after I thought about, you know, like, why is he just renting a bunch of stuff? But <clears throat> I found, I mean, I guess it's because of the housing market right now. I guess with the interest rates being as they are, they're creeping up steadily. And it's just probably not a buyer's market. So I'm, I'm going to give him a pass for not buying anything. But long and behold, he has moved out and he's in his new place. And Chris comes over there to check him out. And he has shades on and his thing is like what's going on with the shades and he's like I got my eyeballs uh surgery got a surgery on my eyeballs and he was like what do you, mean you got surgery on your eyeballs but basically he got the bags under his eyes removed and remember when people were looking at his face um different um shots like I like supposedly I don't know if they were um I don't know, people were talking about his face like he looked like when he had he had surgery, like he got um like um cheek inserts or or what do you call it? What do you call it when they get the injections in their face? Not Botox, but fillers. They were saying that he got fillers or something. But anywho, he said he got his bags removed under his eyes. And they sit in the kitchen and you know, he <laughs> Chris in his confessional said, well, he wasn't sure what to think because he didn't know whether he got punched in the eye by his baby mama or Sheree. He was like, he didn't know what was going on. But after he explained why he was wearing the shades, it was all good. So then he goes into <clears throat> about the conversation that Martel had with his wife when he came over and visited. But let me backtrack a little bit. Before he got into that, he asked them how was the family, how was the kids, and and I think Chris talked about how his dinner went left with Lexi blowing up and leaving, and how she was not really happy about not getting the same materialistic things that the people that his other his or her her other siblings. And I think I talked about that in my last video. You know, she didn't grow up in the house with them. So she was probably with her mom. And she, the bond was different. So when she came over to visit, she felt that bond. I don't know if she felt any different. I don't know if Nell went out of her way. Does it make it seem like she wasn't her child or what? I don't believe that Nell would do that. But, you know, you never know. But um, she was upset that her sister I guess her younger sister got a Mercedes and she never got one I mean what do you expect <laughs> um I'm assuming that all of the kids that lived in the house with them got what they want and she felt slighted it's only natural you know what I mean not that they loved her any less but she just wasn't there to get the big stuff anywho he talked about that and how the dinner went left and Martel said something about it. it's a way to say what you need to say without being disrespectful so that was the segue into when he came over to Chris's house while he wasn't there and was talking to his wife now and how Nell explained to Chris that Martel blew up at her and you know you just you know was very disrespectful at her home and Martel was like well I wasn't being disrespectful. She was being disrespectful to me. She said, and if you don't want nobody, a man to be disrespectful with you, then you need not to be disrespectful with them. And she said she kept bringing up my infidelity, but wasn't talking about Melanie Holt's infidelity. He kept saying, Melody Holt, Melody Holt. 
And so Chris said, you keep saying Melody Hope. He said, I'm sorry. Yes, I forgot. She, that's, she's got her new name. And Chris said, it's not new. And then they sw- switch off to his confessional and talking about, well, I don't, you know, I really feel like she, she did that to destroy me even more. You know, I don't know what that name is going to do for her. And all. I mean, he was really dogging her. Like, like, like that's like, that's the final piece. Like that's the thing that connected them to. He says almost back to like it was before they got married. And his thing is, well, yeah. That- part of you. (laughs) He was not feeling that. Anyway, he was feeling like the the Fletchers picked the side because they went to her ceremony. And Chris was like, we didn't pick a side. He said, we're team Martell on this. No, he said, we're team Holt on this side and we're team Rogers on this side. You know, get over it, Martell. (laughs) <laughs> he is the worst. So next they go into um Kimmy and Letitia. They go to the spa and they're going to get a uni steam. And they could have left this segment out. I feel like this is just a filler clip taping or whatever they just threw in there because they you know we were fine without them making up stuff but anyway they went to this spa and they were going to sit over this herbal tea and get there for jj's detox or cleaned out or whatever it that does and prior to that they come in and you know they're looking at the facility and they're like oh wow this is nice and blue 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 and tisha seems to feel like she might well let's just say with child and only because that recently she's been feeling sick and she's been gaining weight and it's got to be an explanation for it because usually when she feels like that, that's what's wrong with her. So she asked the lady, you know, if you're pregnant, is this a good thing to do? And she's like, well, not in your early stages, you shouldn't do it. So she was like, and somehow she got a pregnancy test. Now I know she didn't buy a pregnancy test at the facility. So she had to have had it in her purse. Anyway, long and behold, she takes the, the test. So she wants to make sure that she's not pregnant, even though Marceau has had a vasectomy. Yeah. Anywho, so they come out and Kimmy's like, girl, what are you doing? What what is that? And she was like, What? And she was like, she said, I just had to make sure. She was like, You realize that Marceau has had a vasectomy. She was like, Well, maybe it didn't take. Like, she's like, Let me see that. And she was like, Well, no, it's negative. But she says, I've been not feeling good. And she said, I've been gaining weight. So she wanted to make sure she wasn't pregnant. So she finds that she tells she tells Kimmy that she's not. So they sit down and they talk about, you know, how she's been going, Tisha just feels like she's been going through a lot. And she just feels like maybe at this time she shouldn't be away from her children. She said maybe she needs to go back to being a stay-at-home mom. You know, she really doesn't know what's going on with her. She said she even asked her, Mila, I want her, her, I think, I don't know if that's her oldest or her youngest daughter. Did she feel like she was being yelled at more? And Mila was like, yeah, mom, you have. So she said, I really need to get myself together. And she said, and she said, I'm don't tired of like going around different folks because they always want to talk about Kiki. I don't want to talk about her. I don't want to talk about her. She was like, well, you need to talk about it because, you know, you had a whole drink in your face. She said, I know. She said, but I don't want to talk about that. She said, I don't want to talk about her anymore. And she says, I really need to get it together. And, um, she said, even Marceau says she thinks that we need, he thinks that we need counseling. Kimmy's like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, what? I said that too, Kimmy, because this is the same guy that didn't want to, he wasn't excited about going to the psychiatrist or the, the or the counselor's um, office. Remember the episode? He didn't really want to go and he was just going just because 
it would have it would satisfy her and then he was saying all kinds of crazy stuff he wasn't interested in going to the couple's retreat to go to the same counselor session or whatever he dogged it out and so you're not telling me now that he's ready to go to counseling i don't know if i believe that tisha but whatever we'll go with it if you feel as though this is part of your storyline yeah anywho so they talk about that and she was just saying that you know oh kimmy was just telling you need to pace yourself you know take small bites and you know because her thing is like i don't understand why you're gonna go back and prove marcel right <laughs> that you need to stay on anyway the next segment is chris and his son he stops by his office and they start to talk and chris is like i haven't seen you since the dinner like what's going on with you he said i've just been staying to myself you know he said there was a lot going on and he was like yeah lexi kind of went it went left or whatever they still harping on lexi leave lexi alone because i feel like lexi it ain't, ain't the issue here okay anyway he goes on to say he said well how did you feel about the dinner like what, what was your takeaway he was like it was a lot of pointing fingers you know he said i just wanted my dogs back you know and he's like yeah well your mama you know why your mama ain't giving you your dogs back and he was like you know i would just be up at two three in the morning just being to myself he said two three in the morning he was like well what's going on with you? he said i don't know he said i just don't sleep well and he you know they talked about that and his thing is like well you know obviously something's bothering him and he has come to the conclusion that on his own that he maybe he needs to see counseling or whatever and um it was like a little sentimental moment because chris he said he remembers when at a time when he may he had felt like that and uh didn't sleep well and you know probably had a lot of things on his mind too things just weren't right in his life so it kind of triggered something because he actually started to cry so the next segment they get back to big lou and tiffany and i think this is their goodbye to us um i think i don't know if tiffany is not able to deal with the criticism of the public maybe that's getting to her or maybe she's um more into she wants her husband back home. Maybe Big Lou wasn't really happy with being on camera because he was not around for the most of the season. He was out, so he says, coaching and stuff like that. So maybe that was part of the negotiation for him to come back home. Like, I want my husband back. And she had to give it up. Like, maybe that I'm thinking that's what it was more like. But they made it seem like she was giving up because she has to find herself and she was going through postpartum depression and that that baby ain't peaches and cream like she thought it was going to be i don't know what she thought how how it was going to be i think she thought maybe her husband was going to be home with the baby i don't know what she thought but babies are no joke it ain't like you can send it back you know he's like oh well let me see do over you know you you got the baby i mean he's cute as a button cute as a button but you're stuck at least for 18 years or however the good Lord foresees him to be with you 18 years and beyond. <laughs> um, so yeah, so they pretty, pretty much go back and forth and their whole thing is like, it shouldn't be, shouldn't <sighs> long story short, I guess they're not going to be a part of the story anymore. And, and she doesn't even say goodbye or anything. She just says, well, I'm going to go feed the baby. She gets up and she leaves out of the room and leaves him in there by herself baby so it's like that's how it went off so i don't know if we're going to see them anymore they might not even have been at the reunion that reunion is still I, I feel like we still have episodes to go and that reunion was taped months ago like they're not going to capture any of the stuff that's on going on in the youtube streets like we want to see you know different things that are going on now like supposedly allegedly uh marceau or not marceau maurice is on probation right he's a lawyer a lawyer on probation for selling you know those things that are you're not supposed to sell to people i mean i don't understand are we gonna see any of that is any of that gonna be captured i doubt it anyway i feel like i know why kimmy's libido is down she's dried up because she is not attracted to him anymore i don't really i don't think she really i think she thought it was going to be different i mean even though she went with him for seven years 
I mean, she probably wasn't privy to everything that he was doing, but now that you live under the same roof, because you notice that people that have gone together for eons, they don't stay married long, because when you start to live with somebody, you really start to see who they are. And he might have been in and out for their first seven years, even though they had bought that house together prior to being married. They had been together for a minute, but it was it's different when you get married. I think people kind of change and expect different things. like. They don't understand is what you see is what you get. Ain't nothing different. And I feel like that's why she's her libido is at an all time low. She's not attracted to him right now in, in this phase. I mean, the, the medication for her cancer treatment may have a part part partially been a, a, a culprit, but I don't feel like that is always the case. I feel like sometimes it's the mood that they put you in that makes you like, mm, I don't know if I want to deal with you anymore. You know, that type of thing. So anyway, that was the end of it. Um, I don't know. Like, how many more episodes we got of this? Because I'm ready for them to bring it to a, a close. Have we seen everything yet? Anywho, thanks for stopping by. Like, share, and subscribe. And hit the notification bell if you're interested in seeing some more content. Granted, I'm new at this. Please be patient with me. I'm going to get better. I'm trying to edit my videos properly so they're not a lot of downtime and gaps and crazy looking things. So just please be patient with me. And again, see you next time.